Hey, what's going on? This is Brett McKay from theartofmanliness.com, and we are back with another edition of Man to Man, where I take an art of manliness reader's question who's looking for advice on some aspect of his life and give him my two cents, my friendly advice, man to man. Uh, before we get to this week's question, I want to thank you all, the Art of Manliness community who responded to Seth's question last week. I was genuinely impressed with the quality and the thoughtfulness of your responses uh, to Seth. It really made my week to see all these men rallying around this guy, trying to help him out um, in his life, helping him become a better man. So thank you for your uh, your comments. Thank you for your suggestions. I know Seth thank you, thanks you as well. And please, please keep it up because we have a lot of men who are looking for advice and we got to take advantage of this collective like man wisdom that we have. Um, so keep it up. So let's get to this week's question. Let me pull it up here. This week's question comes from Aaron and Aaron writes, my name is Aaron, and I'm 22, and I've recently stepped up and gone away to a four-year college. Congratulations, Aaron. And I have about three three years left. But with some wonderful timing, I met the most amazing woman I have ever met before I left. Bully to you, my friend. We've been going to the same church. We are both strong in our faith and have decided to give the long-distance thing a try. But there's a surprising lack of advice, books, etc. on how to grow your relationship without traditional dating. Now, I know that a relationship can only go so far without proximity, but if you have any advice on growing our relationship while being far away from each other, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to read this. Well, thanks for your question, Aaron, because I know a lot of men out there have had to deal with this issue in the relationship. What to do with a long-distance relationship? How do you keep that the fires burning while you're away from your loved one? And um, the advice I'm about to give you comes from experience. When I, uh, my wife and I, Kate, we actually experienced a bit of long distance relationship in our relationship history. Here's the story. I met Kate my freshman year of college. We dated. Um, and after my first year of college, I decided to take some time off from school and do some volunteer work in Mexico for a few years. Um, and during that time I was gone, we kept in touch with each other. And the way we kept in touch with each other was kind of peculiar for this day and age. We didn't use uh, email. We didn't use phone calls. We actually used old-fashioned pen to paper writing, like letter writing. Um, and to answer this question, um, I got in to some of our old letters. We still have them. And here are the letters I have got from Kate while I was gone. And she'd always put like funny stickers on the back. Here we have a bunch of cats saying funny things. This one says, um, I love chicken. I love liver. Meow mix, meow mix. Please deliver. Life's pretty funny. And then uh, we have Sheriff Weezer here, the fastest paws in the West. Weezer was the name of my cat that I had. Um, and then here she put some scratch and sniff stickers on here. Let's see if they still work. That might have worked. Bummer. And then here are the letters that I wrote Kate. Well, I was on her, just a few of them. Um, here's my letters. My handwriting is atrocious, but it got the job done. Um, but here's why I like letter writing so much. I think it's great for couples who are, you know, experience the whole long distance relationship thing. For me, at least, when I write letters and I put actual pen to paper, I tend to get more thoughtful uh, with my writing. It's not as choppy and uh, as I as it is when I'm talking on the phone or when I'm emailing. I don't know what it is about the actual act of putting pen to paper, but I, for some reason, it unlocks something in my brain where I just get really uh, prosaic and thoughtful and deep with with my writing. Um, so that's what I liked about letter writing for me. So I was able to open up a bit more with Kate than I, I would if I had just done email. Another thing that I like about letter writing, um, and Kate and I both talked about this because we both experienced this, is because we 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 knew we only had a limited amount of time, you know, with to communicate with each other. We just had the letter to say what we wanted to say. We knew we couldn't like get on the phone or email with each other. Um, you were a lot more thoughtful and a lot more uh, I guess that's what I'm looking for, in tune with what you're gonna write. You know, you didn't say you didn't talk about mundane, tri you know, trivial stuff. You really focused on like the big picture, uh, life goal stuff. And when we wrote our letters, and you go back through them, we found that what we wrote about wasn't kind of wasn't about the trivial, mundane stuff like what you did that day. And I think that's kind of typically what you do with uh, you know email or phone calls. What we, what we did is we talked about kind of the big picture stuff, like what our goals in life were, what our aspirations were, um, what you know, talked about our faith. Um, we talked about the struggles we were having. And you know, we were seeking advice from each other, you know, how to overcome these 
these struggles that we were having. And in the process of this letter writing, we get to learn a lot about each other. Uh, I learned that I had a lot in common with Kate. She learned she had a lot in common with me. Uh, and I really do think our love grew for each other through these letter writing, through the letter writing. So I love it for that. Letter writing is great because it uh, allows you to focus on the big picture stuff that's really important in a relationship. Um, and the other thing I like about letter writing is that we now have, Kate and I now have this tangible record of a relationship developing during the, the, that time period I was gone and away from her. Um, and you can't get this with phone calls or with Facebook or with emails. And you can to a certain extent, but it's hard to catalog and hold. And it's just like this tangible thing about our relationship, which I think is fantastic. Um, and that we can go back and read and uh, reminisce and um, kind of just reminisce those times we had together, or times apart from each other and time we were writing these letters. And then, you know, we can pass these letters on to our grandkids and great-grandkids, and they can read them and see how our relationship developed. And maybe they can learn some, something from it. But probably what they're going to find out and probably think is when they read these letters that great-grandpa Brett was kind of a cheesy guy. Probably that's what it's going to be. So that's my advice uh, to you. Give letter, li give letter writing a try. Um, it worked for me. I can't guarantee it's going to work for you. You might get that dreaded Dear John letter in the mail, um, but you might not. So give it a try. It won't. You have nothing to lose. Um, so now I'm going to turn the time over to you guys, the Art of Manliness community. What suggestions do you have for Aaron? What advice would you give to him on uh, how to keep his relationship strong and those fires burning while he's away from this great gal that he's met? Uh, please leave a comment below and remember to keep them uplifting and edifying. And if you have a question that you'd like answered on man-to-man, -man, email me at brett at artofmanliness.com or you can just use our contact page on the website. And until next time, this is Brett McKay from theartofmanliness.com telling you to stay manly. Yeah.